Good morning, and uh, thank you for joining us here today. Let me uh, recognize some of the people who, again, make these kinds of announcements possible. I'd like to begin by acknowledging Kathleen Foote, Senior Assistant Attorney General here at the Department of Justice, who is the head of our Antitrust Enforcement Unit. Melly Fontes Rayner, who is a Special Assistant to the Attorney General, who works on uh, numerous health care issues, including the case that we're going to discuss today. Uh, if you'll permit me, uh, the people who could not be here but were there when it counted, uh, Emilio Veronini is our Deputy Attorney General who was on the verge of trying this case, along with Cheryl Johnson, Deputy Attorney General, Esther Law, Melinda Lee, uh, Michael Battaglia, Ryan McCauley, all Deputy Attorneys General, and Ellie Bloom, Special Assistant Attorney General, uh, who handles many of the antitrust trust matters for us here in the office. Uh, here are three simple truths. Our health, it's precious, it's indispensable, in, I'm sorry, indispensable, and it's, at the end of the day, it's life. Two, if health can be equated to life, then health care is life-saving. And three, health care is also a business. If we're going to treat something that's precious and life-saving like a business, then the marketplace for health care must be vibrant and competitive so that the best in the business can rise to the top naturally. That way consumers, and that means patients, our children, our parents, our grandparents, get real choice, they get real quality, they get real value. Let me put it to you this way. Would you shop for anything less when it comes to health care for your child? Muscling out your competitors, erecting barriers to services, imposing unreasonable terms of business, all of these practices strangle real competition. They distort the marketplace, and they're against the law. Especially in light of yesterday's decision by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeal in regards to the Affordable Care Act, it's more important than ever that we keep health care affordable. With annual health care spending reaching nearly $300 billion just in the state of California alone, health care spending is not only a major issue for California consumers, but it's a major issue for our economy as well. As Attorney General, it's my job to protect the health of our state's economy, as it is my job to protect the health and welfare of all Californians. I'm committed to seeing our antitrust and consumer protection laws followed by all of our health care system stakeholders. That's why when we found evidence that Sutter Health may have engaged in anti-competitive businesses practices that raise prices for patients in Northern California, we took action and joined our co-plaintiffs, United Food and Commercial Workers and Employment Employers Benefit Trust, or as we call them, UEBT, who had already been at the tip of the spear in terms of this litigation. They have been excellent partners in this fight for California's access to good health care for its people, and I thank them for all their work on behalf of workers and patients. Sutter isn't a small hospital system with dozens of facilities, 12,000 physicians, and 53,000 employees. It is the largest hospital system in Northern California. And these weren't small price discrepancies that we're talking about. Researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, released a report recently that showed how a consolidated market in Northern California on healthcare has driven up prices for Northern California consumers. Example, the average cost of an inpatient hospital procedure in Southern California, well, it's about $132,000. That same inpatient hospital procedure in Northern California is closer to $223,000. That's a difference of more than $90,000, essentially because you live in a different part of the state. 
Then there's a 2016 study found which found that Sutter's market dominance was one of the reasons why Northern California is one of the most expensive places in the country to have a baby. Here in Sacramento, where Sutter is based, a cesarean delivery costs a woman more than $27,000. That's nearly double what it costs in Los Angeles or New York. And that takes into account any market differences that you might see, cost of living and so forth. Northern California families shouldn't have to choose between paying their medical bills or their mortgage because there isn't enough real competition in the healthcare marketplace. That's why in March of 2018, we on behalf of the state of California and its people filed a lawsuit joining UEBT in their fight to stop Sutter from continuing any illegal conduct and to protect competitors in the healthcare marketplace as well as to protect employers and patients from artificially high prices. Today, we can announce that following settlement proceedings between my office, UEBT, uh, we have, excuse me, I got it. Let me begin that again. Today, we can announce that following settlement proceedings between my office, UEBT, and those that they represent, we have reached a settlement agreement with Sutter. This first in the nation settlement is one of the largest actions against anti competitive conduct in the healthcare marketplace across the country, with unprecedented levels of injunctive relief to restore competition in the market. It is a game changer. As a result of settlement proceedings, Sutter will be required to pay five hundred and $75 million to compensate employers, unions, and state and local governments. Thanks to the good work of the UEBT, we saw that happen. Most importantly, today's settlement marks historic policy changes to restore competition in Northern California's health care market. By restricting Sutter's conduct and making sure there is transparency, competitive pricing, and choice in the healthcare market. Let me give you a sense of those terms that are very important moving forward. I mentioned the $575 million uh, compensation that Sutter will now provide. The settlement also will limit what Sutter may charge its patients for out-of-network services, helping ensure that patients visiting an out-of-network hospital do not face outsized surprise medical bills. Sutter is required to increase transparency by permitting insurers, employers, and self-funded payers to provide plan members with access to pricing, quality, and cost information, which helps patients make their best decisions about the health care they should receive. Sutter must halt measures that deny patients access to lower cost plans, thus allowing health insurers, employers, and self-funded payers to offer uh, and direct patients to more affordable health plan options for networks or for products. The end winner will be patients. Sutter must also stop all or nothing, what are called all or nothing contracting deals, thus allowing insurers, employers, and self-funded self -funded payers who offer insurance plans to their workers and to uh, Californians, uh, those insurers, employers, and self-funded payers uh, will see now that those all-or-nothing deals must be stopped. As, as a result, Sutter will now be required uh, to make sure that no, uh, none of those providers of insurance benefits must necessarily use all of Sutter's hospitals its clinics, or its commercial products in their planned network. Sutter must also make facilities such as their rural hospitals, the Alta Bates Summit Medical Center, and Sutter Hospitals in San Francisco available to those insurers, employers, and self-funded payers for their customers as part of commercial health care benefit plans. Just to sum, it's a little confusing at times. This, these all-or-nothing deals essentially required those who contracted with these hospitals, 
the insurers, the employers directly, to have to accept Sutter's terms that if they wanted access to one of Sutter's facilities, one of its hospitals, they had to accept all of Sutter's facilities that Sutter wanted to put into plan, even though the insurer may not have believed that its customers needed those additional Sutter facilities. That type of all-or-nothing contracting is what we intended and did stop. Sutter must also cease anti-competitive bundling of services and products, very similar to these all-or-nothing deals, which would force insurers, employers, and self-funded uh, payers to purchase for their plan offerings more services or products from Sutter than were needed. Sutter must now offer a standalone price that must be lower than any bundle package price to give insurers, employers, and self-funded payers more choice. Sutter further must clearly set definitions on clinical integration and patient access considerations. Again, this gets a little technical, but essentially what we're going to say here is, and there's information in the documents we've provided, if a hospital system claims that it is consolidating, merging, getting bigger for the purpose of integrating its services, its clinical services, to provide more efficient coverage for patients, then it's got to prove it. It can't use the cloak of integration for clinical services as the excuse to just gobble up others and get bigger and have the muscle to force competition out of the market. Sutter must also clearly set definitions on how it will move forward in all of these terms because there will now be a monitor in place for 10 years at least, a monitor that the Department of Justice has selected and the court must approve. That monitor will be there to make sure that Sutter is fulfilling its obligations under the settlement terms. That is important because, as we mentioned, Sutter is a big system. 24 acute care hospitals, 36 ambulatory surgical centers, 16 cardiac and cancer centers, the tens, uh, more than 10,000 uh, physicians, more than 50,000 employees. Northern California, they are big. It's important to note that all of this occurs at a time when most Americans are feeling very uncertain about where they're going to go when it comes to their health care. We are here to tell those people in California that we intend to make sure that health care is something you can count on. Health care can be a certainty. And so regardless of what the winds are in Washington, D.C., regardless of what some big players in the marketplace may try to do, we're here to tell Californians that we've got their backs. It is our obligation to protect you against anti-competitive, illegal market activities. We intend to keep those players who intend to provide services to Californians to their commitments under the law. And so today's announcement is a far-reaching deal that lets us say to Californians, we want you to get that best coverage you can because we understand that health is life and health care then is indispensable. 